hello. Welcome to another installment of Modern Classics. Last year, I reviewed Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, one of my favorite films of all time, in honor of its 50th anniversary. But as tradition with this channel, whenever I review an original movie, I have to review its sequel, its reboot or remake, or whatever. So, that leaves me to my review of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, directed by Tim Burton. So, how well has this movie aged? Well, let's find out. The film is about a boy named Charlie whose family can't make M's meet and can barely support themselves. But fortunately, a miracle happens. Willy Wonka set out five golden tickets, and the five children who win them get a tour of his factory. Well, what do I think of this movie? Well, first I want to talk about this movie's divisive reputation and my history with this movie. There are a lot of people out there who hate this movie. One person in particular who hated it was Jane Wilder, the original Willy Wonka. I find it ironic that Jane Wilder hated this version, and yet Roald Dahl hated the original. You also got people who love this movie and say it's better than the original. As a kid, I loved both of these movies equally. But when I became a teenager and my love for the original grew more and more, I began to hate the remake. So what do I think of this movie? Well, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this film. There's some stuff I really love about the movie, but there's also some stuff I hate about it. But before I get into the nitty-gritty, let me talk about what I love about this movie. The first thing I really like about this movie is the visuals. They're so colorful, so exciting, so breathtaking that when I was a kid and I saw this in the theater, my eyes just popped right out of my skull. And pretty much everyone who saw this with me, everyone in the theater, was pretty much had the same reaction I did. I love the visuals in this movie. They still very much hold up. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the visuals of the original movie, but it has a very 70s look to it, although you could argue that was kind of the charm of that movie. But the art style and how colorful and exciting this is is just wow just just wow you feel like you're in another world when you go into this factory First, you have Charlie, who is a nice boy and is played by Freddie Highmore, who is in Bates Motel 
and Finding Neverland, which oddly enough also starred Johnny Depp. I've heard some people say that this version of Charlie is too perfect, but given how over the top Johnny Depp is as Wonka, Charlie being this cartoonishly perfect is well welcomed. And then there's Augustus Gloop, who is so gross and disgusting. And then you have Mike TV, who is a really bratty video gamer and thinks he knows everything. He is such a know-it-all. And then there's Violet Vauregard, who is not only a gum chewer, she is a winning, obsessed champion. She is the highlight of this film, as she should be. She's played by child actress Anna Sophia Robb, who is in Because of Win Dixie and Race to Witch Mountain and also Bridge to Terabithia. Both her and and her mom are both the standout of this movie. They're always wearing the same clothes. I also find it very hilarious and hysterical that when Violet turns into a blueberry, her mom's only reaction is that, how is she supposed to compete? Her only reaction is the competition, and that's it. I think the dad from the original had more of a reaction to seeing his daughter turn into a blueberry. He was panicking. And then you got Veruca Salt who is pretty bratty at the beginning of the movie and then never really again until the squirrel scene. The problem I have with her is that she's not bratty enough. I feel like Veruca was done a lot better in the original. In that film, she's practically throwing stuff, punching stuff, and wheeling stuff around, and kicking stuff in the air. She's a real brat in that movie. I also like how we get to know Charlie's family at the beginning and the end. One of the family members, Charlie's mom, played by Helma Bottom Carter. I also like Grandpa George, who's really funny in this movie. And Grandpa Joe in this film is very supportive of Charlie. It seems to have something of a backstory with Willy Wonka's factory and how he knows it so much. And then there are the Oompa Loompas, each one of them played by Deep Roy, who is also in The NeverEnding Story. And the effect used for the Oompa Loompas looks pretty damn impressive for 2005 standards. They pretty much copied and pasted Deep Roy onto a green screen. And it looks really good, like I said. I also like the songs they sing in this movie. Each song in a different genre. One of the songs they sing is a disco song and where they're basically wearing Dr. Insano glasses. And speaking of the songs, let us talk about it. While these songs are nowhere near as good as the songs from the original, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the songs are nowhere near as good as Pure Imagination or I Got a Golden Ticket. They're pretty good on their own. Let's listen to them. 
Augustus Gloop, the great big green evening kumpoo. Come Augustus Gloop, so big and vile, so greedy, foul and infantile. Come on, we cry, the time is right to send him shooting up the pipe. Yeah, this song is really annoying. Well, it's not as annoying as Let It Go, thankfully. And it kind of comes out of nowhere. It is never mentioned again. And then there's Willy Wonka, played by Johnny Depp. And the fact that Tim Burton decided to put him in such creepy looking makeup and give him a wig and really white teeth, I will never know. He has such an annoying voice that it makes me cringe. Don't get me wrong, I like Johnny Depp. But I can't stand him in this movie. And his makeup is creepy looking. It only looks impressive in that he looks like a different person. But other than that, he looks like if Mia Wallace from Pulp Fiction donned a top hat and started using makeup from Michael Jackson. His hat, his coat, and his tails look great. The whole costume does. And you can tell he's trying to give a great performance, even with the, all that makeup and that wig on. And with those pearly white dentures in his mouth. I also think that giving Wonka a backstory is a horrible idea. Don't get me wrong, I like Christopher Lee, but I feel like he's wasted in this movie. And as I said before, giving Wonka a backstory is a horrible idea. Not only is it pointless and unnecessary, but it destroys the magic and mystery of Willy Wonka. 
I don't want to see Willy Wonka's backstory. I want to see more of the children for crying out loud. Now let me give my final thoughts on the film. This movie has none of the magic nor mystery of the original. But it kind of has its own charm. And despite its flaws, I still have a soft spot for it. I'm going to give this movie four stars. Well, that's the end of my review of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So long.